Interest rate could be expressed either as annual every year or a frequency, which means many times per year, such as semi-annual or quarterly or monthly or weekly or daily. So if the interest rate is paid or received annual, we call it effective annual rate. And if we're going to put in two words, so it will be effective annual rate is 10%. So here our I is equal to 10% per annum. If we have a frequency, so if we're going to put it into words, it will be interest rate is 10% per annum compounded semi-annually. So every time you find the word compounded, this word compounded, it means that it's paid many times per year. And that's why we need to look at what's written after compounded. Compounded means payable. That's why we can say payable instead of compounded. So here, usually interest rate is expressed as annual number, but this doesn't mean that it should be paid or received annually. So here in this example, they said that interest rate is 10% per annum. So this is called annual percentage rate is equal to 10%, which means they express the interest rate as a yearly rate. But they said that you need to pay it every semi-annual, every six months. How many six months do we have per year? Two. So how many times per year we need to pay or receive the interest? Our M, which is the frequency, is equal to two. Therefore, how much interest we need to pay every six months? So our I is equal to APR divided by M, which is equal to 10% divided by two. This will give us 5% per semi-annual every six months. So if we'd like to draw the timeline for an annual rate, so here it will be from year zero to year one, we will receive 10%. While for this example of a frequency of semi-annual, so here, this is one year, and then we have half a year. So in the first half a year, we will receive 5%. In the second half of the year, we will receive another 5%. A total of 10%, 5% plus 5% is equal to 10%. So my question to you, which one will give you a higher value? If we receive or pay 10%, annual rate as effective annual rate, or we receive 5% in the first half a year and then five, another 5% 5 in the second half of the year. So let's assume that we receive a, we will deposit $1,000 at time zero and would like to know what will be the future value in year one. So the future value is equal to present value multiplied by one plus I close bracket to the power N. So future value at the end of year one is equal to 1,000 which is the present value multiplied by open bracket one plus 10% to the power one. So this will give us 1100. What if we use a frequency of semi-annual every six months? So I know that the future value for the first half a year, it's equal to present value multiplied by one plus i to the power n, which is the same formula. So it would be 1000 multiplied by one plus 5% to the power one. Why did I use here power one? Because this is the first period. Our period here is six months, which is half a year. So this will give us $1,050. Then I would like to know what would be the future value at the end of year one. Therefore, I will use the same formula, which is the present value multiplied by one plus i to the power n. So the future value at the end of year one, it will be 1050 multiplied by open bracket one plus 5% close bracket to the power one, because this is another period, another six months, which will give us $1,102.5. Therefore, if I deposit $1,000 today, at the end of year one, if I will get the interest every six months, it will be 1,102.5. Therefore, if you'd like to make comparison, you'll discover that the frequency will give you a higher future value. Therefore here, with annual, we have effective annual rate 10%. With frequency, its annual percentage rate is equal to 10%. M is equal to 2%. So can I convert this annual percentage rate into effective annual rate? Because I know that the future value of the frequency is bigger than the future value of the annual rate. Therefore, can I compare this rate to be an annual rate that will be effective? Effective, it means the actual rate I will receive or pay. So here we have a very simple formula, which is called the effective annual rate formula. So EAR, effective annual rate, is equal to open bracket one plus APR divided by M, close bracket to the power M minus one. Equal, effective annual rate is equal to one plus 10% divided by two, close bracket to the power two minus one. So it will give us 10.25%. So now when we compare the annual rate of 10% compared with the compounded semi-annually that we need to pay every six months. So every six months, if I convert it into effective annual rate, so I can compare it with other rates, it will be 10.25%, which is higher than the 10%. Therefore, we could say that the higher the frequency, the higher the rate. So if we have the same annual percentage rate, 
semi-annual rate will be bigger than annual rate, quarterly rate will be bigger than semi-annual rate, monthly rate will be bigger than quarterly rate, weekly rate will be bigger than monthly rate, and daily rate will be bigger than weekly rate. So let's get an example put into words using this previous example that we discussed. So for annual rate, Mark invested $1,000 at 10% effective annual interest rate for seven years. Make it here one year, for one year. Calculate the future value of his investment. So I know that we have a present value of 1,000, interest is 10%, n is one year, future value will be present value times one plus i to the power n. So here, future value equal 1,000 multiplied by one plus 10% to the power one, which is 1,100. If we use a frequency, so I will use here, Jeff invested $1,000 at 10% annual interest rate, compounded semi-annually for one year. Calculate the future value of his investment. So here we have present value 1000, which is the same, annual percentage rate 10%, number of periods, or how many times he will pay per year, or the frequency is two, six months per year. Therefore, our n is one. Remember that our interest and time must have the same time unit. Therefore, our future value formula will be present value multiplied by APR divided by m, all of this to the power m multiplied by n. So here it's equal to our present value is 1000 multiplied by 1 plus 10% divided by 2. All of this to the power 2 times 1, it will give us 1102.5. So this is one way to do it, which means I adjusted the time to match the interest. So I converted the interest here to be every 6 months, and then I changed the time to be every 6 months. And that's why in the power, I said n multiplied by m to convert it into 6 months. So another example we could use is we could convert the interest to be annual, to match the time. So here we have, with the frequency, our annual percentage rate is 10%, and it's compounded semi-annually, which is, means m is equal to, we can calculate effective annual rate. So effective annual rate is equal to 1 plus APR over m, all of this to the power m, minus 1. Therefore, our effective annual rate is equal to, open bracket, 1 plus 10% divided by 2, close bracket to the power 2, then subtract 1. So this will give us effective annual rate 10.25%. We know that all the time our effective annual rate is bigger than annual percentage rate if interest rate is paid many times or received many times per year. Therefore, now our interest rate is per year and our time is years. Therefore, our future value is equal to present value multiplied by 1 plus i to the power n. Remember, interest and time must have the same time unit. In this example, interest became annual because we calculate effective annual rate and n is already a year. Therefore, our future value is equal to 1000 multiplied by 1 plus 10%. And here, I will not use 10%, I will use 10.25. So you need to write 10.25. So here, you need to write 10.25% to the power one, and this will give us 1,102.5. Therefore, you'll discover that either way will give you exactly the same answer, but the easier one is all the time, it change the time to match the unit of the interest. It will be quicker and easier.